Irene Fox. So, um, part of my recent purchase has torn up today. Maybe this will look better without the light. Yeah. Um, what could it be? Let's have a look. There you go. It is a set of bearing colours. So you've got these little um, pieces that fit into the centre of the bearing. And this will even pull out the dead end bearings. The ones I was having a problem with the other night. And that goes in, you screw this down and it splits out these gaps and opens it out and it locks itself into the bearing. Then you get this slide and you screw it onto the top of that and you slide hammer it out. So I'm going to put this to the test this evening and see if we can remove that little burn that I was talking about and having trouble with. Okay, that was one thing that came. And next thing, yeah, give me one second. As always, hey, I got, I got parts. I got a full gearbox. Well, all the parts for one. For a CB125 RS, and they are in lovely shape. I'll just stick on the light for you. They are in just lovely shape. You can see the shaft itself maybe is a bit rusty on the outside, but everything in here is good. You can see the cog that I needed most. Um, hold on, I take it off here. Give you a look. Best way to do it. You'll see that that's in a lot better shape. A lot better. I mean, you can see a little tiny bit of wear on the same side. But not nearly as bad as the one that I have. And it'll absolutely do the job. Um, plus the kickstart one. Which is here on top. Um, give me a second to get that out of there is as you can see a lot nicer condition hopefully it'll work hopefully the bushings are even just as good i think so you can see that bushing's a little bit uh, just not in the right place there it's in now there's no play there so happy with that. Better be careful. I don't want to lose my thrust bearings and things. That'd be a disaster. Yeah. Well, you can get what I mean. I'm just not going to start putting it together now in front of you. But we can. We'll be doing a lot more of that later on. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> figuring stuff out and just I want to fix this washer on just so I don't lose it thrust washer sorry <laughs> one second nearly there yeah I got it just so I don't lose it um, these ones you can see are like brand new and everything on this shaft moves just beautifully um, obviously it was always kept with pretty decent oil you can see the kickstart is like brand new bar the shaft end but like the cogs are like absolute brand new so there you go I got another selector drum even though I don't really need one I got it anyway he gave me that anyway with it and he gave me the little wheel that goes on the back for selecting the star selector so he gave me that i don't exactly know what this washer is but i'm sure i'll find out he gave me the two screws i don't know what the two screws are for they look like ones that came out of the water or the oil pump 
that's what they look like. Um, this little one, which I think whatever goes in this other side, I think that might be where it goes. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I'm wrong. That's just for distributing the oil. I don't know where that one goes, but he gave me that anyway, so I don't know why. Um, and there is a cog. Yes, this one. There we go. Have that one as well. So, yes, I'm well. I'm well aware that this is upside down, and that this piece should actually be around that way. But, uh, you live and you learn. I'm just having a bit of trouble here getting it to function properly. It's just because um, it's pulled apart, kind of. Anyway, just thought I'd give you an update and show you what uh, came in the post today. And I may actually try a new burn puller out now. See what luck we have. See how good it is. Okay, see you in a minute. So, after careful investigation of these parts... As suggested by Darren when he first opened this uh, spare engine, there's a difference in the size. This is off the same model of bike, remember, from probably the same year. And there's a difference in the cogs. Um, I mean, there's a tooth extra in some and a tooth less in others. I mean, with this one, I've got 36 teeth on this one. Now, it's, bear in mind, it's out of the same engine. And then there's that engine down there. And on it, we've got 37 teeth on that particular one. Then, on the kickstart gear, or the idler, I think that's what it is. Um, we've got 30 teeth on... I think it's this one has the 30 teeth and there's 29 on the other one <laughs> which is a bit odd and obviously that's not going to work if I try to put one of them cogs into uh, this engine but these are all in very good condition and I'd love to put them I'd love to just take the whole lot and put it into this engine and I could do that but I want to bear in mind that this is a this is a numbers matching bike. Oh, uh, the engine number, which is on this outside casing, matches the bike and matches the papers that came with the bike from factory. So I'm very tempted to take these because they're really good shape and everything else. I'm very tempted to take them and put them into that engine. And it kind of pains me to even think of pulling that engine apart again because it's running so good now. And I probably won't get the timing right again. And I'll probably end up calling Darren again to sort it out. But I really would like to have the kickstart fixed on it. And I do have the right one for the kickstart for it now. For that engine because uh, Darren did tell me there was a difference when he opened them up. In the sizes so this is obviously the size to go with that 83 engine so it's decision time if i put these parts into this engine i will not be selling that engine it's as simple as that because i know i'm gonna need them for this bike but look it, I'll rebuild the engine anyway. I'll throw the parts in. I'll rebuild it. And we'll see what happens after that. But I'm not going to be selling, because these are very hard to come by. I'm not going to be just selling it away now that I have it. But I'll rebuild the engine anyway, and I'll maybe save it for the bike then. Later on, if anything goes wrong. With the kickstart eventually, and it won't work at all, then I'll... I'll strip this engine down and put these in. Hopefully by then I can get hold of some of the proper cogs for it. Yeah, pity. Because I could have had two good engines. But what do you do? It's just a bit of fun anyway.
Okay, I'm gonna attempt to try and pull this bearing out of here. As you can see, it's a blind bearing, there's a bottom to it. And it's one of them that's very hard to get out. That's why I bought this in the first place. And we're gonna go now and we're try and find the right piece for it. Which I think is this one. I think it is. Yep, it goes in there. Hitting the bottom, I don't know if it's going to get under the bearing, but we'll know now in a minute or two when I tighten it up. I don't know how much of this is are going to see because I do have a tripod, but it's kind of hard to get a view where you can actually see what's going on. Um, put the slide hammer out here. I'll get it ready. Set it here. The old SH50. Uh, set my camera up here I may have to do this on the floor I'll try and do it on the bike seat first to see if you can just view what I'm at here okay give me a second Try a smaller one. Hope you don't mind if I move you see it. It's too small. That's too small. So my cunning plan didn't work. Which is Unfortunate. Let's see what I'm up against here. I need to go down far enough to get lip in under the bearing, which I can't. Uh, guess I'll just have to keep trying. See, this lip is supposed to get under the bearing and then these split out and then it pulls it out. But these are not getting under the bearing which is stopping it from coming out. Oh dear.
could end up being a botched screwdriver job. I hate to say that word. Can't leave it in there because the bearing's really gritty. Not in good shape at all. Well, guess that proves one theory. I'm not getting that mount in a hurry. Okay, I'll go back to the drawing board and get it out and do another video and tell you what I did to get it out of there.